Okay, so let's see if I can come across any... Any looters. Oh, hello. Uh, would you mind? Would you mind just, you know, buzzing off a little bit, Viscount Machandis? Hello, reformers, and welcome to a series of Parisno 0.9. Now, let's get back into it. It's been a while since I have played Parisno. If you'd like to check out the mod page, there is a link in the description. And I gotta say that I'm very impressed with the changes that have been made over the course of development, because the last one I played was 0.81. And you'd think to yourself, yeah, 0.81, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not really like a big jump, you know, from 0.81 to 0.9, but it's pretty amazing how much they've done to it, actually. So anyway, welcome to the land of Parisno, where elves and giants roam in the ancient moors and forests, where dwarves graft, craft great works and men form mighty empires. All right, so there are a number of things that we can enable here. Personally, I don't really want to enable hard mode or the fog of war because I feel like they're, I don't know, I feel like it just makes things a little bit annoying more than enjoyable. So otherwise, what we're going to do here is the troop proficiency level. You can actually see the two options here. One is halved, one is standard. We're just going to go for standard. And this is the new character creation screen. So you can obviously choose who you want to be here. We're going to choose a human, amusingly enough. I actually had an idea to play as a dwarf for this particular series. But then I thought to myself, I'm not entirely sure if the siege mechanics are fixed. And by that I mean, well, you know how the sieges were with the dwarves. They were unable to scale the ladders and everything like that. So I'm unsure whether that's actually fixed. So I'm just going to go with a human here. And I'm going to change what I was going to do. Because I was going to go with the Kaikoth Confederation. But then I thought to myself, well, it doesn't really suit a dwarf to be particularly persuasive. And uh, I don't know whether you know what I'm, I'm getting at there. But you'll see in just a second. Okay, so we're going to be an impoverished noble here. Usually I do not pick this start. Because the Noble usually gives you the banner immediately and uh, usually gives you a pretty decent amount of gold and everything. So it's kind of an easier start. But the main, th the main reason why I'm doing that is because it's going to give us a little bit of extra everything. So it's going to give us persuasion, going to give us leadership and all that sort of wonderful stuff. Otherwise, we're going to go for riding skill here because that's going to give us another, another huge amount in riding skill right there. So I don't even need to spec into agility if I don't want to. And then... Our first adult job, we're going to be a spy. And now, I don't know whether you've noticed what's happened here, but uh, yeah, there's a, a new kind of mechanic, I guess you could say, in Parisno 0.9, and that's basically persuasion has a much bigger effect in the game. I know that in 0.81, it did have a big effect on whether you could rescue certain prisoners and things. That's the same in this version. But in this version... Persuasion also has an effect on whether you're able to build enterprises and the sooner the better, basically. Because before, you would have to go into the tavern and you'd have to buy a drink for everyone to increase your relation with that particular town. But they've also reduced the requirements for that. So you don't need to, you know, you don't need to do it ten times or anything like that. You only need to do it five times. But they've also made it so that persuasion reduces the requirement of when you can get an enterprise. So it basically reduces it by five, because I have five right here. And that means I'll be able to build enterprises immediately. As soon as I have the money, I'll be able to do that. And otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to go for money and power here, I think. Let's actually just take a quick look what that changes. What does that actually change? Well, it seems, it seems good enough to me. I mean, we're going to lose some power strike and everything, but money and power does give us a little bit more trade, a little bit more of everything else, and I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to continue onward, become an adventurer, and uh, we are going to pick this rather stylish looking banner over here that looks like a, a knocker on a door. And, uh, well, we're going to say knock, knock. Yes, we're going to say knock, knock. Now, for those of you that have not been on my channel, well, since the previous Parisno series, this is the name that we use whenever we venture into Parisno because, let's face it, Scout Wilkins is a fantastic name. Isn't it? Isn't it a fantastic name? Uh, well, maybe not. Anyway, we're just going to absolutely pump our strength full up to 14. And otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to get some prisoner management right here. That's exactly the reason why I also have a good amount of charisma. Going to go for some leadership too. And I'm thinking inventory management, you know, because 
Looting is very important in Parisno in general, and if I want to make a huge amount of money, being able to have a huge array of loot in your inventory is really quite impressive. I was actually thinking of leveling up my agility as well so I can get another point in Weapon Master because my main plan for the moment is to make some kind of amazing crossbowman. And maybe we want to go actually for a horse archer here because we are going to go with Maccavia. Yes, we're going to go with Maccavia and we're going to hope that we actually do a pretty decent job with them. I personally feel like they're really, really awesome. Actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, fine. Let's Let's go for horse archery, why not? I, I suppose we'll do that. I'm not a not a terribly big fan of using a crossbow on a horse, but I think it should be okay. Shall we get some pathfinding? Here's the thing. I have a kind of idea of which companions we're going to use, but I don't exactly know whether they are going to be so easy to find. So it might make sense for us to just take a couple of points in pathfinding. I don't really want to waste them in that, but it's kind of what I'm going to do. And uh, unfortunately, due to my choices, we do start with a very low cross cross bro uh, proficiency. I'm going to do that much more often. Don't worry. Anyway, we're going to go for a little bit of a different hairstyle here because Maccavia, you know, it's in the north. So we're going to go for a bit of a blonde guy and we're going to change our beard. Yes, we're going to go for a very heavy beard. There we go. That sounds good to me. And we're going to start in Maccavia. And there we go. They just they just put you out. They just put you out right onto the world map. And we are going to go to our very first village. And welcome to Borisno Adventurer. You will soon find that this mod is a bit harder than native and brings you to an entire new world. You will meet new NPCs, discover long lost treasures, embark on dangerous quests and more. Now bear in mind that there are epic quests in this mod that can uncover legendary weapons and there are also unique spawns as well, of course. And you're going to be facing quite a few of those as time goes on. Now bear in mind that each recruit we have here is going to cost us 30 orums, which is pretty expensive, but they are pretty good, I gotta say. I, I feel like Maccavia has some very nice recruits and volunteers initially. And let's actually just take a look at the map here, because I think... No, it doesn't seem to have changed. Okay, well that's, that's good for me. Because I thought to myself it had changed for a second, but I think my, my camera was just a little bit weird. Anyway, let's see where I am right now. Okay, so I have four people right now. Did I already go to this place? Yes, I already went to this place. Okay, so what I probably want to try and do is I want to pick up a Guildmaster quest or a quest for some of these Maccavian vassals and things like that. I think I'm going to be joining Maccavia as quickly as possible as a vassal or a mercenary, and we're going to try and fight in some of their wars because they generally do have some pretty good enemies, to be honest. I feel like using a Maccavir and their crossbowman is going to be something that we're going to be very pleased with. And uh, let's have a look at Lord Olaf here. I do have five in persuasion. Bear that in mind. I would technically be able to increase that even further if I wanted to, which might actually make sense because the formula that they use currently with persuasion is that of three times your persuasion. So basically, if I had nine, then I would be... Uh, I think it, that would be contributing 27. Yes, that would be contributing 27 rating to whether you're able to recruit a certain unit because that's the reason why they've done this whole requirement thing because rescuing prisoners used to be an extremely easy way of gaining power in the mod, but that is obviously changed because you do need persuasion to be able to do that. Anyway, I certainly intend to pass by Yorid Castle. So yeah, that's exactly the reason why I've taken a pretty decent amount of persuasion here. And we have the opportunity, potentially, to go for a little bit more as well. So, well, well, who knows? Maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. I'm just going to get some quick tasks right here. And he doesn't... Oh, there we go, he does. Ah, love letters. I have fallen for a lady. I saw Gravine Drea at a banquet not long ago and have thought of little else since. I must know if she feels the same way. Will you deliver this message for me? I appreciate it, Scout. Uh, there's just one small snag. I'm not a literary man, and I suspect this type of thing is beyond me. You will have to help me write the note. Hmm, let's see. Do you think I should start it off? I was thinking either greetings, wench, or my love, my darling, I hunger for your touch. No, we should probably... Uh, how about dear lady, I hope this letter finds you well. 
Excellent. I like it. Now what's next? It's kind of amusing actually because I think we started off Perizno 0.81 with a similar situation where a lord wanted us to write his love letter. All right, so uh, let's see. Your fragile beauty excites my desires or I could not help but notice you. No, let's let's not do that. Uh, let's do your fragile beauty excites my desires. Wonderful. Truly a masterpiece. Uh, yes, okay. Well, everyone, let's not use this again, you know, with, with real people, shall we? This is, this is not particularly good. This is not a recommendation. Your beauty dazzles me. Uh, there we go. I love you more than my own horse. No, let's not do that. Your beauty dazzles me like the glare of the sun on an enemy shield. All right. So this is going to get us a huge amount of relation with this guy. So he's going to be a very nice supporter with, you know, to us in the foreseeable future. And where is she, actually? I don't exactly know where she is, so I guess we're going to have to find her. But first, let's deliver the other letter. Don't think I have a really significant strict time limit on that. So I should be able to go in here and speak to the Lord himself. Is that him? Oh, no. It seems like he might actually be somewhere else, but that's okay. So it looks like many of them have come here for the tournament and I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to participate in that. Personally, I feel like the tournament is a bit of a waste of time at the moment because I do not have the ability to perform very well in that in that particular capacity. I'm much more of a leader, prisoner taker kind of type right now. Anyway, I bring a message from Lord Olaf. There we go. There's a small, small increase right there. Ah, we can already join as a mercenary. That is pretty fantastic. I'm actually going to do that right away. And we're going to see who we are at war against. We're at war against the Valahir clan, as well as Kingdom of Tolrania. Very, very nice. I like that. And what else do you have for me? Oh, no. I cannot accept that. Yes. Capturing a couple of enemies as prisoners is certainly not going to happen. That's just way too harsh for me at the moment, especially King's Guards. King's Guards are really quite strong, so we're not going to do that just yet. Anyway, what's that? You have a letter from Lord Siegfried? Let me see. Oh my, what a strange man. Did that poltroon really write this, or did he get one of his stable hands to scrawl it? I have never been so insulted. Oh, well, that's not particularly good. I, I, I felt we actually wrote it pretty pretty nicely, but, uh, oh, ah, uh, well, mm, I, I suppose there's nothing to be done. There's nothing to be done about it. We must move on, and I will hunt this fellow down and execute the law, and let me see if I can take any other tasks here. Tasks are pretty important in this version of Parisno because they seem to give a huge amount of experience, so we're going to try and use that to our advantage. Ooh, what is this? Track those deserters down. Okay, this is going to be kind of hard. Not sure how that's going to go. What do I have on me right now? I literally have a tavern hider's dagger. This is not very good, is it? Not very good at all. What about a cracked new crossbow? Give me that crossbow. Okay, so yeah, there is also a new buying system. I don't know whether you can see that right here now. Sell before, sell after. I I'll explain that as we go. But for the moment, you can highlight things. Or you can still hold control, but that's going to instantly buy it. So if I hold control right now, there you go. Instant buy. And uh, we're going to go for some bent steel bolts or just regular steel bolts. We'll just go for regular steel bolts. Why not? And yeah, we're going to equip that once we get out. Personally, the dagger, I... I, I don't know. I don't really want to buy anything else. So we're just going to go with that. Let's buy some... Should we buy some extra goods? Let's buy some grain, I guess. There we go. All right, let's go to the tavern. See if there are any companions here. Companions might be good. Adventurer guildsman, a volunteer. Eh. Yeah, I'm hoping to run into some of the companions that are actually free because I've sorted out a couple of them that I'd like to get. A little bit sooner rather than later. Let me see, actually. I'm looking for my companions. Oh, no, that's not going to work. What about... I want to know something about a person. These are all of the unique spawns, by the way. So we're going to be fighting those at some point. Have you met any travelers looking for work? This is a new feature that they've just added by the looks of things. Ah, I've met Slyter in Lesbier. And uh, he asked me if I know any mercenary captains. Do you have anyone else? Zyra in Vinica? I think that's not very close by. Ah, Shi Jin in Amana. He would be amazing to get, because he's free, and uh, he's very far away, isn't he? Amana is all the way down there. I suppose what we could do is we could travel all that way, and it might make uh, it might make a pretty nice journey for us. 
and maybe we'll come across a couple of robbers, a couple of bandits, and I do need to equip my new crossbow, so let's do that. There we go. It's pretty nice that we can equip that crossbow almost immediately because, of course, we don't require any power draw skill. Okay, so let's see if I can come across any any looters. Oh, hello. Uh, would you mind? Would you mind just, you know, buzzing off a little bit? Viscount Machandis? Yes, there we go. He's buzzed off now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are gaining a small mercenary payment, which is absolutely fine with me. I'm hoping that it's actually going to award us much more as time goes on, as we gain more and more units in our little party here. Did I level up? Yes, I did. I did level up. So let's go for another point in strength because I'm hoping that I'll be able to use one of the best siege or mounted crossbows as we go forward because dependent on which battle we're going to go into, I will be switching between the, the various crossbows because obviously mounted crossbow is going to be very, very useful. And of course, a siege crossbow is going to be insane to use on foot when we're in a siege or something else like that. So anyway, we're going to get some more horse archery right there. That's actually, you know what, that is actually something that I did not do. I should have gone and gotten a horse, but I was a bit unsure whether we would be able to utilize it at the moment because it's so expensive and it might just be an absolutely awful horse that's going to be extremely slow for us. So I don't know whether that's a good idea, but, ah, there's some deserters. Oh, the deserters are, the, are a Maccabean crossbowman group. That is not very good at all. Okay. I don't exactly know how we're going to fight those guys with our current party. We only have Maccabean freemen, and they are barely even close to getting to crossbowman level. So that is kind of bad. Uh, if we're able to do that... Ah, wait a minute. We might be able to do this and then gain a little bit of power that way. Okay, Ol's way is all the way over there. Maybe we'll come across a couple of bandits as well. Hopefully those guys will not be defeated by anyone else. It would be nice if they weren't. Ah, hello. Ah, there we go. That's exactly the kind of people we need. All right, let's do it. Let's do a nice battle here. 13 against 11, and bear in mind that these Freeman guys, they're extremely good and very, very nicely equipped for such a low-level unit. And that's exactly the reason why Machavir, in my opinion, is a really great faction. But bear in mind that every single faction in Perizno is viable in some way, because they all have their various strengths, and they all have their weaknesses. For example, Machavir, their weakness, if you had to call it a weakness, would be their lack of extremely strong cavalry. So if you have cavalry versus cavalry, like if you're up against the Falcon, Realm of the Falcon, who are known for their cavalry, then you might have some difficulties fighting those with your own cavalry as Machavir. But the, the reason why I'm choosing Machavir is because of their crossbows, of course. Their crossbows are just so incredibly strong. And uh, these enemies right here, they are not knowing what they're doing. They are going to get absolutely murdered. And I'm hopeful that I will actually be able to use my crossbow kind of a little bit, maybe? Uh... Yes, apparently not. Apparently not. Wow, really? Come on now. Yes, there we go. There we go. There's a little bit of proficiency for me. A little bit, and not too much. Maybe I can get a little bit more, more, a little bit of, little bit of damage. No. Okay, I'll just kill one of my own troops because apparently that's what I do nowadays. Yes. Well, it is going to start off a little bit, uh, shall we say, rough with the crossbow because it is just so slow and kind of difficult to get working when it has such a low proficiency. But we are gonna be taking all of these things right here and we're just gonna take as much as we can get our hands on. We do have a little bit of extra inventory management, of course. There's a nice hat. I'm gonna put that hat on and I'm actually gonna put this ragged outfit on as well. We're changing our, our look pretty considerably already, which is kind of nice. And we'll just continue onward from there. Okay, so let's go to Ol's way. Oh, wow, it looks like Titus Rex was already taken prisoner by the kingdom of Tolrania. That is a pretty harsh start for Titus Rex because uh, I don't know whether you noticed back there, but he had some extremely cool units. Oh well, never mind. Let's take this and we're going to go into the village center and try and find the suspicious man. Uh, I don't think it's actually going to be around at the moment. All right, well, it seems like we found the nervous man. He was just hiding behind this building here. I'm going to get ready to shoot him in the face because, uh, well, there's no love lost between these two, that's for sure. I'm looking for a murderer by the name of Ailes the Red. 
Yes, it is certainly you. It is definitely you. Okay, I come not for money, but to execute the law. Let's do it. Yes, take that. Unfortunately, the village does deteriorate with us, so it is going to be a bit annoying for us to recruit people from here, but maybe they have a task for us. I'm hopeful that we might actually be able to get a task from them uh, maybe a little bit later on, but at the moment it seems like that's not the case, so I won't be able to recruit anyone from there, but that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Let's have a look and see if any people leveled up. Yes, they did. They leveled up into Axemen. Very nice. Okay, so they're going to be much more effective. We're going to try and level them into Crossbowmen almost immediately, and I'd like to see how our mercenary wages are actually doing, so it would be kind of nice for us to get that pop up soon. It seems like none of the villagers actually have any tasks for us at the moment. It seems like they are just kind of chilling out at the moment. And uh, so we've done that. So we can return to Lord Sadun and we have to track down the deserters. I wonder whether we could do the deserter quest right now. Mm, it's probably unlikely. Holy Crusaders are running around. 75 of them. They are exceptional. Very, very good at what they do. And maybe we can ask her a task here. Nah, it seems like they're all not willing to give any tasks at the moment. And I think I've probably spent enough money for the moment. So I'm going to go over to McCann and we're going to sell a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of difficult to get another task from the Guildmaster here. So maybe we want to do something about that as well. Anyway, what we can do right here is we can just place... Uh, well, not this. I was actually wanting to sort my inventory out. But what you can do is you can select this, and then if you want to sell everything to, you know, to the right of that, then you can just click sell after, and boom! That's it. It's all done. Pretty fantastic. I'm going to sell that as well. And now we just have the, the food that I had previously, and that's absolutely fine. Okay, so let's go into the tavern real quick, because there might be someone that we want to get here. Adventure Guildsman, Entertainment, a Mercenary Sniper. Hmm... Mercenary Sniper might be really awesome, but I don't... Yeah, I really don't have enough money. I certainly don't. So we're going to have to do something about that. Alright, so I found a group of deserters. I don't think this will count for the deserter quest, but they do have some pretty, well, I, I'd say mid-tier units for us to fight here, and I think that could be pretty good for our experience gain for our units. Once we get them to crossbow level, I think we're going to be in a much better situation, because at the moment we really don't have any kind of ranged capability. And even when enemy units get into melee range with those crossbowmen, they're going to definitely feel some pain because the Maccabean crossbowmen are very good at what they do, even in melee. So we're going to try and see if that has any effect. And these guys have shields, so that's not going to be very good. I can't believe I actually hit someone, really. Oh, there we go. We actually hit someone. Amazing. Past his shield? That's kind of weird. Okay. Well, I'm not going to complain about that. Thank you. So let me just reload here real quick and we're just gonna let these guys come in here and they're actually they're actually wanting to kill me right now yes they do want to kill me a little bit okay let's see if I can do a little bit of damage with my little dagger here it's not gonna happen is it no the dagger is just oh I actually did do some damage with the dagger oh interesting interesting okay well continuing to uh, you know use my crossbow is obviously gonna be something that we really quite badly need to do because Getting our proficiency up is going to be something very, very important indeed for that accuracy. That's exactly the reason why I expect in a little bit of Weapon Master as well. And it seems that like we are losing a couple of our Maccabean Freemen, but that's not too bad. I think that's absolutely fine because these guys are actually pretty high tier, as I've said. Not, not exceptionally high tier because we were able to beat them, but, you know, still kind of uh, kind of mid-tier, so it's kind of nice. Maybe we'll get some good loot from them. No, it seems like we won't, but it's okay because we can sell all this pretty easily. And that is that. Great. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to put my food at the top here so it's easier to sell loot. And as you can see, I've actually come into the Reich, the Reich's territory a little bit. And we're going to see if I can maybe do a little bit of damage to some other people here. Valahir clan. Yeah, I don't know whether I can take those guys on. No, I certainly can't. They have Jarls and all kinds of mean things, so we certainly don't want to do that. But maybe we could take on these Volhir Raiders. Let me actually just see if we can do that. Let's get some more Axemen. There's our first crossbowman as well. And uh, yeah, mm. you know what I might need to do? Let's go to Arndal, actually. If we go to Arndal, we might be able to get another task that will actually be suitable for us. And we might be able to get some levels as a result. 
That might be an idea. Oh, look at that. Nibor Hood has gathered an army as well. All right, so let's go into the tavern first. Ah, Kengish. Hmm, is he? A, I think he's a companion, isn't he? Hmm, yeah, it seems like it. Will you join me in, your, in, uh, in our travels? I don't know whether we really want to take him, to be honest. I, I mean, how much is he going to be? Wow, okay. 4,500, yeah. That's not going to be something I am willing to part with at the moment, because I don't have it. Yes, I don't have it. There's a weapon enthusiast as well. Maybe we want to speak to him, actually. Ah, there we go. Okay, so there is actually a task, well, quest here from him, and you can see the dueler. Never heard of him. Go on, you have intrigued me. Well, to be honest, I know very little about the dueler himself. What I do know more about is his weapon. A weapon? What kind? A sword? A very special kind of sword. A rapier. Interesting. Where can I find out more about the dueler and this rapier of his? Now, I have actually done this quest in a previous series of Parisno, and uh, we're probably going to do it again, but we are going to need to level up a little bit before we can actually complete it. So, that's going to be a bit harsh. And uh, I'm going to check upstairs, because the tavern seems to be quite busy. Alright, so we're now speaking to the guildmaster, and as you can see, he actually wants us to deliver some wine, so let's do that. And it's only to Ford, so if we can go all the way down to Ford, yeah, it's going to take us a bit of time to get there. And I'm a bit worried about coming across any bandits that are extremely powerful at the moment. So we do need to be a bit cautious. Ah, scout, uh, yes, they're after us. Snow walkers. So these snowwalkers, they are actually traveling at the exact same speed as we are moving. And I'm actually thinking, you know what? I think we could probably take these guys on if they were not running together. If they weren't running together and they were just running by themselves, I think we could probably take on one of these groups. So I'm hopeful that we might... Yes? No? Ah. Okay, that's, ah, that's a bit of a shame. That's a bit of a shame. I actually hope that I could split them... And uh, maybe we could take them on. Oh, there we go. The Troublesome Bandits have been eliminated by another party. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, we couldn't take them on at the time, so I guess that's the reason why. Anyway, let's go in here. And it's fine. It's actually fine. Because we will be able to participate with Lord Logerson, who's helping us out a little bit. And uh, we are going to go up against 41 units here. Now, if... I can actually make this work. We should be able to get a good amount of experience here for both me and our units as well. And uh, I am going to be looking very, very much for... I think there are three companions that I currently want to recruit. And Shi Jin is one of them. Unfortunately, he's still at Amana. I did want to go there, but it seems like maybe that was just not going to happen because we're just so far away from it at the moment. But Shi Jin is free. And I believe that there's also, I think, Kara. Kara is also someone I want to get because she's going to be kind of like our stand-in medic until we get Allendale. And then she's going to branch off and, you know, level up something else. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get her as well because getting early surgery, wound treatment, so on and so forth at a base level is a really, really good way to go. And you can see here that actually Makavia using this Black Knight is not doing too badly at all. Wow, okay, never mind. Seems like their cavalry is seemingly pretty strong up against bandits. I mean, they are just bandits, so it's nothing really to write home about, but... They are seemingly doing a pretty decent job here. Otherwise, I think what we want to do is try to rush over here as quickly as we can and see if I can get at least one shot off. <laughs> There's one shot, yeah. That's exactly the reason why I wanted to fight these snow crawlers by myself, because I know that they don't really have shields that much. And, uh, yeah, up against us with our crossbow, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be too difficult to actually get a couple of kills. But it seems like Lord Logerson wanted to protect us, so I do appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, he decided to join. But, again, I would have been able to tackle, I think, probably one of these guys. Now that we know exactly what we are facing, I think it would have been pretty easy. Otherwise, we can capture some prisoners here. Thankfully, I do have 20 prisoner capacity. That's going to be really nice for us. And uh, I'm going to be looking around for a blunt weapon of some kind. Getting a blunt weapon is going to be something that I'm going to prioritize because with the exception of using my crossbow of course, I am going to want to run around on my mount. Maybe we're going to try and find one of those winged winged maces 
and uh, try and capture a couple of people. But bear in mind, the developers of Parisno have changed things up once again because there used to be a very easy and lucrative way of gaining money in Parisno, and that is going to the realm of the Falcon, recruiting units from that faction, leveling them up into units that can use blunt weapons. And those blunt weapons can, of course, take people prisoner all the time. But the developers have seen through this and they have decided to add in a percentage chance that when you hit someone with a blunt weapon and kill them or take them out, there is a small percentage that they will die as a result of that. Because obviously, you know, not every time you're going to hit someone with a blunt weapon, not every time they're going to get knocked unconscious. I mean, you know, it's realistic. It's much more realistic, at least. But uh, that is going to make things a little bit more difficult for us to actually be proper slave traders. Anyway, we have now arrived, and I think... Don't I need to go to the tavern for this? I think I need to go to the tavern for this and actually speak to Chairman Stoneheart. There we go. Very nice indeed. Look at that. 496 Aurums. We leveled up twice. Gained a little bit of relation as well. Not too bad. And um, I don't really want to do anything here with this guy. I don't really like the flip a coin thing. I might do it when I have a little bit of extra cash. But right now I don't really have anything to show for it at the moment. And anything else? There's a mercenary here that's pretty strong by the looks of things. Is that a ransom broker? That is a kind of ransom broker. I don't know whether he's going to have anything that I really want. He's going to... Okay, never mind. Apparently he doesn't really want to tell us anything. Let's see if the guildmaster here has anything for us. It might be an idea for us to take a look. And... Uh, unemployed mercenaries. Yeah... Okay, fine. Let's try it out. I mean, even if we are not able to do it, at the very least, someone else will be able to eliminate that party and then we don't have to fail the task. But yeah, we still need to find Lord Sadun and uh, near Ford. Okay, well, I don't see them right now. That's kind of weird. Not entirely sure where they've gone, but I suppose this is as good a time as any to end this episode off here. And so I thank you very much for watching our first episode of Perizno 0.9, and I will see you next time.